Good evening everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now do you know your body type and do you know the right type of style and clothing to wear that will enhance your beauty and your figure? If not, don't worry because help is at hand. We'll be getting some great advice from colour and body shape expert Jules Standish and later on we'll have some great makeup tips too from Veronica Bentley to highlight your facial features and ensure that your makeup suits you. But first of all, let's have a quick talk with Bianca. Not that quick actually. I'm not trying to get rid of you or anything. <laughs> trying to get rid of me, Grace, already. How are you? Fine, thanks, Grace. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. Now, do you know your, your body shape and everything or does Jules, is Jules going to help us out with I that? I think Jules might help us out a little bit with that. Have got any idea of what yours is? Um, what 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 clothes fit for? Yeah, it? like what your body. You know, you have the, like the hourglass and the yeah. triangle and all that. Not what really, you think you not really, not not very good. <laughs> I just I just go in the shop and I try things on and see what looks nice. But it would be good to find out exactly what body shape you've got and what's good yeah. for you, what clothes yeah. you should be wearing. I have for an it. idea of what mine is, but you know, I'll yeah. know for sure today. I think yes, Jules can help us out hopefully. Right. <laughs> so what have you got for us today? So, do you want me to go into the catch-up video yeah, first? Yeah, yeah, let's have a look at the catch-up first. Yeah, so yeah. let's have a little look at the Chrissy B catch-up um, of this week. All about what's been happening this week. Yeah, so if you want to call us on the show, you can on 020 7686 6300. Or you can even Facebook us at The Chrissy B Show or tweet us at Chrissy B Show. And she always reads out the tweets on the show as well, so it's worth doing that. And you can check out our website as well, which is chrissybshow.tv. So, Babs, what's been happening this week? Well, this week was a very, very special week because we had an event on Sunday where Chrissy B was presenting, and that was the Love School event. It so was amazing, it, wasn't it? It was absolutely fantastic. So we were down there presenting as well, and Chris was on stage with all of those people, um, presenting the sort of build-up to the actual show. And that was all about love and giving tips about marriage, and for people who haven't got a relationship yeah. or a husband, like how to prepare for when that time is going to come. What about the build-up? How did you feel about the... Um, we had There was a uh, like a competition for yeah, talent. There I was... love that. We had a like, huge talent show. We had judges who were um, judging the talent. And the performances, we were obviously running around a lot on the day and doing lots of interviews. crazy Me busy. Barb were literally just running around right. trying to grab everyone. Yeah. But the bits that I did catch, I thought were amazing. We really beautiful fantastic singing. fantastic talent. Mm. And then even afterwards, everyone was just on a natural high because, you know, love is something that's so important to so many people, which is why, at the end of the day, the place was so filled. There was a 11,000 people, yeah. you know, so it's a massive And well done, Chris, you did a great job. All those people yeah. to present in front of that as a big crowd. Well done, Chrissy. So what's been, ha what happened on Monday, Barb? Well, on Monday's show, we had um, a great show about tit for tat and about knowing when to let go of a relationship or let go of an argument, more to the point. And uh, we had a young lady called Zara who came onto the show who had some serious problems with her ex-boyfriend. She would always be fighting with him and she believed he was cheating on her. So there were constant disputes and fights and, you know, it's debatable whether she should have perhaps left the relationship a lot earlier than she did. Uh, anyway, she sort of wrote this song about him because she did actually split up with him in the end and unfortunately he was cheating on her, so yeah. she was right. Was for the best. Yeah, and she wrote this uh, song about him which she actually performed at the end of the show. Yes, should we take a look at it? Definitely. On Wednesday's show, we were talking all about how to bring families closer. So yeah. usually it's by food and bringing people around the table, isn't it? Yeah. So we had Dale Pinnock, um, celebrity chef, on, and we've had him on the show before. He's great, isn't yes. he? And he cooked his mum's favourite dish. What was that? So it was like a beetroot tart with feta cheese. So good for you, beetroot. It was so yummy, and it had red onion in it and cheese. It was just really delicious. And he made that for us live in the studio. And we also had a mother and daughter who used to run a restaurant together with their dad. Oh, that's cute. And now they run a PR company, so they were telling us all about that so it's worth watching back on youtube as well okay yeah and on friday show Bob. friday or tonight we're talking about um body shape and how to enhance different parts of your body that can be with your clothes and colors and also talking about the face as well so different um face shapes and different features in your face which you can enhance with makeup so tonight should be very very informative for the ladies yeah, looking forward to that one so that's it from Chrissy B's Catch Up this week. And remember, you can call us live on the show on 0207 686 6300. Or you can visit our Facebook, which is The Chrissy B Show, our website, which is chrissybshow.tv. Or you can tweet us live on the show at Chrissy B Show. Lovely.
So <laughs> I always find it. It weird. is lovely. I always, it's find it, yeah, I always find it weird when it's me and it's vegan. And it's <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, I'm going to go on to our news then. Okay. So I thought it's a really interesting story. So with university fees, we all know they're really high and really annoying, and we, you know, we want to get our education, but you know, there's a lot, you know, against people that are trying to get a further education. So um, one guy in um, America has decided he'll munch his way through his university fees after earning over £11,000 in all-you-can-eat competitions, oh, um, which goes straight on to his university fees. So Eric, who's a computer engineering um, student, undergraduate, began competitive eating in 2011 after realising that one night that he didn't have to pay for a meal because he ate it quickly enough. So it's similar, Chris, to remember that challenge that you had, the burger one? Which I failed, I'm, I'm <laughs> pleased to say. Three massive burgers and loads of chips. And with four, was it four yeah. of us that ate and we still didn't yeah, manage to finish it? Yeah, it was like four it. of you trying it and yeah, you yeah. still didn't finish it. But, but he Eric, does that, he does that too. Thick. Huh? He actually does that all the time. He does that all the time. Oh, so that's probably like a regular sort of like <clears throat> lunch for Eric. <laughs> Wow, and he gets money from it or he just doesn't pay for his food? Sometimes, I think sometimes he gets money and sometimes he just doesn't pay for it. But I think the, the way... Thing is, if he carries on like that though, he's going to end up, you know, yeah. ruining his health and maybe not even getting to finish his education. You well, can't exactly. be like that every day. That's true, that's very true. Yeah. Um, so he said that his first, when he started it, he um, went to the Big Red Steakhouse and he had a three pound cheese steak sandwich and he had it, um, you had to eat it in less than 10 minutes and you get <gasps> the food for free. Eric finished it in just over five minutes. Oh, you don't even get to enjoy food Can like you believe that. it, Chris? It's over, too, it's over too quickly. Isn't yeah, it's it? true, isn't it? But like, he's trying to earn money out. <laughs> this is like a job to him, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> it's like a job. And he says, I'm, I'm eating my way through my education and it helps me get through. Um, and he said he pulled his first financial winnings after wolfing down nine pulled pork sandwiches oh in six minutes. Um, and he took home over um, $250, £150 for that. So he is making money do it. But the thing that shocked me the most, Chris, is that you'd think this guy was overweight, wouldn't you? You'd think that yeah. he was huge by now. He's um, super fit, he's six foot three, and he's an athlete with a oh. strict fitness regime. Such a contradiction, I, I isn't it? I don't get that. I don't see how, it, how he could be. <laughs> I know, I can't. <laughs> because a lot of the, that stuff is not healthy. Yeah, so I don't, how I don't can know you how. still be healthy when you've eaten all that? Yeah, I, don't, no. I don't know. But he is, though. He's six foot three and an athlete, so. <laughs> it's not going to last. <laughs> <laughs> can't Maybe keep he's going the exception like that. to the rule. He's young though, that's the thing. He's young now, but yeah. as, when he gets older, he's going to probably feel it. But. It's true. Oh, gosh, yeah. stop now, stop. No, but he's only going to do it for a few years for his education. Oh, and a then few I, years. I guess he's going to stop. I don't no, know. I, I do feel for students nowadays though, yeah. because it's like, I think they have it really hard. Because yeah. in my day, gosh, it was so easy. I lived at home, yeah. got a grant, education was free. It my was degree, free, I didn't it? have to pay oh, for anything, gosh. so it was like really easy. Yeah. And I didn't really need the money that they were giving us on top of everything to get our books and everything, but it was just, well, hey, let me just spend it on the stuff. God, those were the days, Chris. Yeah, but now I think it's really, really hard for Yeah, it is hard. And, you know, it's, it's I quite suppose good. maybe not hard, but I suppose it's a normal thing. Maybe it was too easy before. Now yeah, it's kind of like, now okay, it's, now it's normal. <laughs> yeah, but they, they're still increasing the fees, though, all the yeah, time. So that's, yeah. not, that's not very good. No. But, like, it's good that, that story, it's good that people are coming up with inventive ways to yeah. make money and sort of, even though that one's not a very healthy way of doing it, but at least people are trying to think of ways that they can make money yeah. and, you know, pay off the university fees because he's making a lot of money out of it. <laughs> <laughs> earning more than he's earned more than £11,000 from it so Gosh. far. So, you know, it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, and also this week, two men spent eight days stranded on a ca capsized boat, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, so it was in the Atl Atlantic Ocean. They were clinging on to their overturned boat for over a week before oh the gosh. sea rescue service saved them as awful, isn't it? Oh I can't believe someone would survive over a week in freezing, freezing cold water. So the pair whose ident identities have not been released yet told officials they'd been at sea for eight days and drank salt water to survive. Can you imagine? Does not dehydrate you? I'm not sure. I, I, it's really bad for you, isn't yeah. it? But obviously they have to do it just to survive. Um, so the Coast Guard said it received a call on Saturday that the two people were sitting on top of a capsized boat near Palm Beach in Florida and a rescue swimmer w uh, lowered into the water from a helicopter and rescued them and wow. took them to hospital. Gosh, thank goodness for that. Yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't it? I think it's amazing what you can do, like <laughs> survival techniques. I, I literally wouldn't know what well, to they, do. Well, they didn't really do much. They just stayed on top of the boat, <laughs> didn't they? And drank water. <laughs> it wasn't really like bare grills or anything, was it? It is, but they still survived. <laughs> I know, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, the mind, the mind had to be strong. <laughs> Give them something. Yeah. Them <laughs> Sorry, well done. Surviving. <laughs> that is fantastic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. You glad know, they could have gotten eaten by anything as yeah, well, yeah. like by a shark or anything. Like, that's amazing. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing, but I think it's amazing. <laughs> and also, I was talking about someone that fell asleep on a different show earlier on today. But um, two pilots were flying an Airbus on its way to Britain with full passengers, and they fell asleep, Chris, oh, while they were p uh, flying this plane. Um, so they, and the, the plane had to go into autopilot because they wasn't controlling it anymore. They said that they normally they take it in turns to sleep. So um, it, what must have happened is that one fell asleep and the other one fell asleep. It's oh. horrible, isn't it? And they had a full like full um, plane full of passengers as well. Shocking, isn't so it? So when you get on a plane, you don't sort of even think about. It. No, you think. Oh, I'm thanks staying. for bringing that up. Now <laughs> next time, everyone, we're all on a plane. It's like. I wonder if the pilot's going to sleep. Just when you thought you were safe flying <laughs> to your holiday in Florida, you're not. I know, you take your own nap, don't you, and everything. Yeah. You just don't worry about, like, oh, no. Do you remember, Chris, there was a story I was telling you about, and um, the man, there was a man that <laughs> thought that the, um, the exit um, door was the toilet. Do you remember I was yeah. telling you about that? <laughs> and, he tried, and he tried to yank this door, and it was, it was the exit door to the plane, and he was <laughs> yanking it because I think he had a bit too much to drink. And um, he was like a really, quite a famous cricket player as well. And he was really sorry about it, but like... <laughs> and the staff, you can imagine the staff running over like, stop, stop. But uh, luckily, I think you can't, it's, I think it's impossible to open it in mid-flight, luckily. But that's still like scary, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, still, I mean, yeah, you just never know, do you? Oh, well, thanks for putting all that in our heads now. And hopefully no one's <laughs> flying out tomorrow or anything. And now you've heard what Bianca just said, you'd be worried about the pilot falling asleep. Yeah, you got, so what you've got to do is say to the air hostess, is, is the pilot awake? Please, yeah. can you just go? and check. <laughs> Just give me a little tap. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, thank you so much, my Thanks, love, Chris. for those lovely stories. No problem. <laughs> and after the break, we're going to be joined by Jules Standish, who's going to be telling us all about the right kind of clothes to wear for our body shape. And she's also going to be joined by her model, Tilly McLean. So join us after this. Welcome back to the show. And before we speak to Jules, let's take a look at what you guys had to say about body shape. Most people have got a favourite or least favourite part of their body. So today I've come down to Oxford Street to ask the general public what their favourite and least favourite part is. I think my breast. You one breast? Both breasts. Because <laughs> they're probably the best asset I have because my bum's quite flat. So yeah, my breast. Why well, don't you like your shoulders? I just want them to be a bit like, not as broad, a bit more narrow. <laughs> I don't know. Um, my first reaction was my brain. Because it shows, um, obviously it houses my intelligence and um, yeah, when it's working, when it's doing its job, it's showing that I'm a very engaged person, generally. Okay, and what about your most least favourite part? Um, the organ which, the appendix, obviously, because it's now obsolete, so when it, when it gets, you know, when it, when it goes, it hurts and it can do some damage to you. Because we evolved and we no longer need it, so that would be the most obsolete part. I would say mitochondria. Well, what's that? That's the powerhouse of the cell that makes us us. So we have trillions of cells in our body, and without the mitochondria, we can't really function. Is that the part of the, the is that part of the D, your DNA? Uh, it's not really. It's uh, one of the organelles. So one of the if you think about organs in our body, it's a bit like that in a cellular level. So it's uh, it's very important. It gives you the energy and also um, the power to to function in our everyday lives. All right. So that's what makes us us. You, you think in terms of cells? Yeah, absolutely. And also uh, bacteria as well. We've got tons of bacteria on our body, which makes up about ten. 10 times more the bacterial cells in our body than the human cells. Um, so in a way, like the microscopic things that we can't really see are probably the most important part for me. I don't know. Legs? Oh, I was going to say that. I've been complimented on that a few times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So, so, you're, um, so you'd say your legs is your favourite part? Yeah. Why is that? Probably because I use the most. <laughs> and what's, what's your most least favourite part of your body? I don't know. Arms, they're quite small. So is, do, you, do you try and do anything to change how you feel about them? Go to the gym a bit, but that's about it really. What about before? What was your favourite and least before you were pregnant? Were they yeah. different parts? Yeah, no, my favourite probably my boobs. <laughs> and least favourite tops of my arms, bingo wings. I like my smile and my eyes. They're very, very... <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a, we have a close-up of the eyes now. Very nice, I can see why. Yeah. And what's your most least favourite part of your body? 
Probably my tummy. <laughs> yeah. What do you want it to be like? Just more toned, I guess. Yeah. I don't. I don't need abs or anything. That's. But yeah, just more toned and flatter, I guess. <laughs> Okay, we had a few strange answers there from some of the guys. <laughs> Not so very straightforward, but I have Jules here with us today to help us. Thanks so much for coming back, Jules. Thank you for having me. Now, last time you were on, you were telling us all about colours. I and was the right lovely sort of to see colours. you in all your greens Thank today. You. I have taken everything that Jules said on board last time, and I have changed the kind of things that I'm wearing and the colours. But today, you're going to teach us about body shape, aren't you? Because yeah. once we forget that wrong, it's not much use getting the right colours if all the, the, the clothing's wrong, right? No, and actually it's, it's really interesting to um, think that actually most women wear 15% of their wardrobes 85% of the time. Gosh. And then you have to ask yourself, what is happening with the rest of the wardrobe if they're only yeah. weighing 15% of it? And actually, bar the old kind of christening outfit and wedding occasional, mm -hmm. the rest of the wardrobe is being bought because most people just don't know what their body shape is. Mm. Um, and so they're they, not looking good and they're wasting well, they're quite not, a lot of money. Because what they're doing is they're following fashion all the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you think every season the fashion's changing, it's so fast that we really find it hard to keep up with it. But mm. we see all the models and the celebrities and all the magazines show us that we've got to be wearing the latest thing. So everybody goes out and buys it, wears it once and realises actually it wasn't for them. So it goes mm. in the wardrobe. Yeah. So they're back to their old basics again. Gosh. So actually you know it's um to understand one's body shape can save you a fortune mm -hmm. for a start you can have a wardrobe <laughs> that works for you entirely mm -hmm. um and you can look your best so there's a Wonderful. lot to be said for knowing what your body shape now is. how do you identify your own body shape well what's really interesting is that um, everybody's shape is determined by their skeletal structure so we can actually change our weight we can affect our muscle tone and our mm. posture but our body type is actually set. And most people don't understand that. They think that they can go and work out at the gym 15 hours a day and it's going to change their basic structure, but it Doesn't, won't. Right. So understanding one's body shape is really important. Um, and my advice to people is to stand well back from a mirror to be able to look at themselves. About mm -hmm. six feet back is, is a really good place to be able to see yourself objectively. And the most important thing is to be able to understand your proportions mm -hmm. because body shape is all about proportion. And the first thing that I will look for is the shoulder to hip ratio. Right. So if someone's shoulders are smaller than their hips and they've got a waist, that is what you would probably term the pear shape. So right. you've got someone who is kind of bigger on the hips and smaller at the top with a waist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, someone who was more rounded would probably have the tummy issue going on. A lot of women feel they have tummy issues. Yeah. Um, or if you've got the shoulders bigger than the hips, that's what we call the inverted triangle. And that's uh, often women who work out a lot okay. tend to actually broaden their shoulders. Mm -hmm. And some women just naturally have broad shoulders and um, a much smaller waist and hips. So they feel so quite self-conscious about having broad shoulders. Mm -hmm. So if, if that was the case, then what you would want to do is obviously try and balance out the hips to the shoulders. Yeah. If your shoulders are smaller um, than your hips, then you would embellish them. You would use shoulder pads. You would wear right. structured jackets and tops um, to actually enhance the shoulders and, and then you would get more of a balance and the opposite mm -hmm. would obviously be in effect if you had broad shoulders you wouldn't want to wear anything structured you'd want to wear raglan sleeves sloping mm -hmm. um, sleeves and bring the v-neck down so that that naturally softens um, the top and then you could wear say pleated mm -hmm. trousers to actually balance those two areas out. Now there's no such thing as a wrong body type is it? No, some women are so not. hung up they look at their body and think oh gosh I just don't look nice in anything no, absolutely. and I've just got the wrong kind of body. There's no such thing. There's no there? such thing yeah. and actually a lot of women have Im Im imaginary flaws actually to be honest mm -hmm. but if you don't feel attractive in yourself yeah. then that flaw is going to affect the way that you feel and if you can actually wear clothes that bring out the best bits mm -hmm. and kind of you know negate the bad bits or the bad bits that, that people feel that they have yeah. that's what it's all about really it's about bringing out and highlighting mm -hmm. all the positives and trying to camouflage the negatives i think now you've put on tilly for us today haven't you yeah, have. our model so yeah. you're going to be talking what are you going to be doing with tilly today tilly tilly's very young she's only 19 um mm. and it's very interesting that someone of her age um she's pretty she's got a she's got yeah she's got a <laughs> She's got a good body shape and um, actually for someone Hello. so young, you? <laughs> hi Tilly, <Hello. laughs> um, 
to actually feel that she needs help at this stage mm. is really important because if you think that she's then going to go through the rest of her life knowing exactly what the best things are for her to wear so yeah. that she can go out to work feeling confident, she can feel that actually she knows she looks her most attractive, mm. then she won't be making those expensive mistakes in the wardrobe that we no. were talking about yeah. because she'll know what to dress herself in. And then mm. she can wear the high fashion if she wants to, but she knows that actually that fashion's got to fit her shape and not the other way around. Okay, now do you like what you're wearing right now, Tilly? No, this is more what I used to wear before right. Jules showed me what suits my body shape. Okay. So I never, well, I don't like my stomach. Mm -hmm. And I do have larger breasts, so I used to cover up my stomach, mm -hmm. and everything used to be floppy and flowy. Yeah, so yeah. no one, no one would notice. And I'd wear very loose jackets and trousers, so okay. I wouldn't get noticed. So this is the kind of thing that you used to wear all the time. Yes. Really. Okay. Yeah. So tell us what's wrong with this with this outfit. Okay. Well, Tilly's got a very curvy body shape, but actually you can't see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't notice her curves. And whilst you don't want to make them scream, what you do want to do is give her a body shape. Yeah. Um, and she has got a really nice waist. She's got quite a long body. And what she's doing here with these trousers, because they're very low-waisted, mm -hmm. it's actually making her body look longer and her legs look shorter. Right. Okay. And because she's got the, the two contrasting colours, you notice that more mm -hmm. as well. Um, these trousers are not good for her anyway, because what's happening is she's got pockets here. Right. So they're making her hips look bigger than they naturally mm -hmm. are. And the trousers... Um, because of the shape of them, they're not very shaped, basically. <laughs> so what's Flary. happening? Yeah, they are. So uh, the boot cut would be a very good can we shape. See, can we see further down on, on the trousers? So what okay. they're doing is that they're, they're too short for her anyway, so she can't yeah. wear high shoes with this. And high shoes would automatically make her And the trousers are almost dragging longer. on the ground there with those flat shoes. Can you see yeah. yeah, exactly. They're a very bad shape. If they were more mm. fitted down the leg and then they went out, that would give yeah. her leg a really good shape. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is that her legs are looking shorter. And when you have a long body, what you actually want to do with shorter legs is you want to then lengthen the legs. So mm -hmm. you want to actually bring the waist up. Right. Okay. The opposite is obviously true. If you've got a very short body and very long legs, then you want to lengthen the body. Mm -hmm. So you would be wearing this out and then it wouldn't matter because then you'd be lengthening a short body. Yeah. So okay. um, for, for Tilly, what she really needs is she needs a jacket that shapes her. She needs a jacket that shapes her under the, under the bust here. Mm -hmm. And actually, so you can see her waist and then automatically you can see that, that she's a lot slimmer than yeah. she actually is in this outfit. Okay, so I can't wait to see that. So you're going to pop up off and get a change for us, aren't you, Tilly, yeah. to, to wear something that you've obviously chosen for her. Do you want to pop off and get ready then? Thank you. We're just going to go to a break uh, very quickly. Just before, can you tell me what, can you tell from looking at me what my body shape is? Well, you look very in proportion to me, your shoulders and your hips, and that's mm -hmm. the first thing that you would want to look at. Yeah. And I can also see that you've got a nice waist. What I would want to see is actually a jacket that pulled you in here, mm -hmm. so you could pull the shape in a bit more and see that waist. Right. And an empire shape would be very nice if you wanted to skim that over your stomach, if you mm -hmm. didn't want to highlight that stomach area. Yeah. That's what a lot of women actually don't want to do. Tummy is a big issue for a lot of women. Uh -huh. So, and the empire shape is brilliant for doing that. You just want material that floats over it okay. very nicely. Yeah. And if you wanted to make your, you know, your legs look longer, then you would wear this shorter, mm -hmm. you'd bring it up, um, and that way you'd be putting it probably right. more in proportion. Okay. So um, for you also, you need to wear structured tops, so where the line comes up there rather than mm -hmm. there, that pulls your shoulders in okay. and, and oh, makes them slightly squarer. So All right, we're just... going to be hearing more after the break. Great. Just, we'll go to a quick break and then do join us after this. Welcome back to our Body Shape Show. And Tilly's back with us now after a quick change. Yeah. <laughs> you did that super quick, well done. So Jules, can you tell us about this outfit that you've chosen for Tilly? Okay, well first of all, I've actually managed to get Tilly in a structured, fitted jacket. Mm -hmm. Um, what's really important when you've got a large bust is to get a jacket that fits right under the bust. Now, most women think that it's got to fit on the waist. Oh. Okay, so I'm just going to show this. So, for Tilly, it's really important that it comes underneath right, here. Okay. Otherwise, if you have it too on the waist, it gapes open and you don't get right. the shape of the waist properly. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of women with a large bust have problems with jackets. Yeah. And I know you have a problem yeah. with mm -hmm. jackets. I find yeah. it really difficult to actually fit my waist. Right, so. okay. And by giving her a jacket with structured shoulders, you've automatically then brought the waist in more. Mm. This jacket goes really beautifully over her hips. And then what we've got is a really nice long line because she wants to elongate her legs because mm -hmm. she's got a long body. Yeah. If you wear um, a skirt, a dark skirt with the same coloured tights and shoes, you're going to make the whole legs look really oh, long. Nice. It's when you change yeah. the colour of the shoes, all the tights, all the legs, then things 
get stumpy, get short and up. stumpy. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to lengthen your legs, that's mm. a really, really good tip to do that. Okay. Um, I've put this scarf on Tilly because obviously she's in quite a lot of dark colours um, mm. and this just brightens the whole thing up. Tilly wanted some outfits for work because... What do you do, Tilly? Mm. I'm a photographer. Okay. And so I needed something that I felt very sophisticated in and confident. And comfortable as well. Yeah, exactly, so that I can lot. actually manoeuvre when I need to. Okay. So this is great and I actually How feel... How do you feel in this? I feel completely it? different. <laughs> Before, you, I can feel quite sluggish. But here yeah. I've got my heels on and I feel... I'm so the right work. clothes do actually make you feel more confident. Oh, it's don't amazing! I'm seeing jewels. I just feel a different person. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. well, she looks so different because now you can see her body shape. Yeah. Um, and actually, with the skirt, with the pencil skirt, the pencil skirt fits an awful lot of shapes. It's very mm -hmm. flattering, provided you get it hitting the right part of the knee, mm -hmm. and and it's right on the knee here, which is one of the most flattering parts. If you get a skirt that actually hits you there on the calf, that's probably one of the worst places you can wear a skirt for most really? for most mm -hmm. women actually, because it's the most unflattering bit. So if it hits there, it can actually make your legs look bigger. Oh, so okay. actually, the best shape is either just above or just below the knee, and that's right. for, that, that goes for, for all universal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. absolutely. Um, and the other thing that we've done is it actually, if we can just undo this slightly, because um, Tilly was wearing this before, and, and it's you know as a top, when it's loose and shapeless, it's not doing much for her body. But this um, skirt, because it's nicely fitted around the waist, right. she could now take the jacket off. And put a belt round it mm. and then again that's pulling the waist in so Doesn't there's lots good. of it if you've got a waist you want to wear a belt because it will take the eye straight to okay. the waist if you don't want to show your waist to your tummy then a scarf is a really good way of camouflaging it because your eye will go straight right. to the okay. color and it'll go straight to the scarf okay um but again scarves long necks can wear wrap around scarves if you've got a short neck you want to wear a scarf that comes down you must never wrap a scarf around oh. a short neck because it'll make it look shorter. Okay, that, mm, didn't know that one. <laughs> okay, now you've got one more outfit to get changed into, yeah. haven't you? Do you want to pop along and yeah, do, that? do that? And just while Tilly's getting changed, we're going to go to a quick video as well to see some makeovers for plus size. So let's take a look at this. Here I am outside Mitch Clothing about to go inside for our size plus makeover. Let's go inside and meet all the people involved today. <laughs> Hiya, Jennifer. Hello, Lindsay. Lovely to meet you. So, are you ready for your are you ready for your makeover today? Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's go meet the team. What they're wearing now? Would you say that this is not not doing them any justice? Would you say it's not very flattering? What would you say? Um, I'd say at the moment, there's we've got room for improvement. <laughs> We're just generally going to look at, you know, apple shapes and pear shapes and different styles that will be more flattering, probably things that you thought you couldn't wear. OK, so let's get them into the changing rooms and try on some different styles. What do you think is the most common fashion error that people wear in the larger size? They come in here, is there something that they, people you find do and it just looks really bad and you want to help them? Or Some ladies still try to find um, a short top and if they're wearing trousers it's absolutely not the right thing to do for a lady because it finishes in all the wrong levels. So come out Lindsay. Ta-da! <laughs> Lindsay's wearing a gorgeous red dress from Joseph Ribcoff. It's actually a dress that you can wear both ways, so you can either wear it with the V and the slight um, scoop at the front, or you could actually wear it back to front and have a slightly higher neck. Well, we always ask them what size they are. For instance, you might come in and tell me you're a size four, which is close, but some people that come in that say they're a size 16, and you know they're not a 16, so there's no point in showing them another size, because they'll get offended if they haven't told you. So you have to work out, and you can usually judge after, I mean, you know, I'm getting on a bit now, I know roughly what uh, most people's sizes are, and I know what I think, what people want. So come out, Jennifer, let's have a look. Wow, that is very glamorous, isn't it? The reason why this jacket is particularly great for curvy girls is that this central panelling, which we've seen all over the catwalk, so this jacket is really great. Sometimes it's colour. People go for the wrong colour. They want to wear a fashionable colour, but they can't. I know everybody says that teal suits everybody, but not everybody wants teal. That's the difference. I think the common misconception here that we're trying to dispel is that most women can wear stripes. It's about the proportion of the stripe and where it falls.
That is absolutely gorgeous. So this is your favourite outfit, and it does look really, I think it's my favourite on you as well. What, um, what is it about it that you like? Uh, I like the long line. I like that it's quite comfortable as well. I think I would never wear a round neck normally, and that's something that I feel freed up to, to pursue that. This is your favourite um, outfit, jacket. It looks fabulous on you. And um, what is it that you like about it? It's just so glamorous, so easy to wear. You can wear it on top of anything. I actually love this suit. It's just so flattering. Have you learned any new sort of styling tips from your chats with the stylist today? Yeah, and you try something on, you think, oh, I never wear that. And it looks so different and so good. So you really have to think more in a new way. What do you think, what stood out the most um, of these looks and why you chose them? Well, Lindsay especially, I mean, she's supposed to be sort of it's a shy, retiring little person, but once she's got all the makeup on and in the right clothes, I think she looked fabulous. And of course, Jennifer looks fabulous in that as well, very glamorous. It's all about, you know, being adventurous and trying the things that you might not normally try. I think we've all had a really good day today and learned something. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thanks very much. Okay, so that's proof that whatever your size, you can still look fantastic when you get the, the right clothes and the right colours. Absolutely, right. look at the confidence those women have. And actually, stripes is quite an interesting issue because a lot of people say, oh no, I, I can't do stripes. Yeah, because we always used to hear, don't wear them because they make you look bigger. Yeah, well, you know, this is where if you've got a smaller top, a small bust, you know, small shoulders, mm -hmm. actually horizontal stripes will broaden you and equally you can do it on the bottom if your bottom half smaller than the top, mm -hmm. so you want to balance it out. And vertical lines, very, very slimming. Yeah. You know, the, the, the line and design is very interesting because your eye gets drawn to the lines mm. before anything else. So actually wearing the vertical down, very slimming for, for a lot of people who want to lose a, a couple of dresses. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. All right, so Tilly's looking gorgeous in this dress, I have oh, to say, you. beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, Focus well, I mean, first of all, the colour. Yeah. You know, I have to say the colour is absolutely amazing. On but I would never have normally chosen this. Really? Yeah, Aww. I was like, oh no, it's far too bright. But actually, I feel so confident you in it. You look gorgeous in it, it's lovely on you. <laughs> well, you know, red is that confident colour anyway, mm. isn't it? Um, and the thing about being curvy is that a lot of girls think, oh, well, I, I can't wear things that, you know, are slightly fitted, I'm going to feel really awkward in it. But the thing about this is that your eye is drawn immediately to Tilly's waist because mm -hmm. you can actually see now what a lovely waist she's got. It's not um, showing too much skin, so that's why she actually feels quite happy in it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's showing off her body really beautifully. And this is just skimming over her hips and her tummy area, which is the mm -hmm. area that she said she wasn't that happy about. Um, so actually, this for her is a real comfort zone right. at the same time as looking really stunning because it's fitting beautifully at the top mm -hmm. and because it's nicely panelled, it's giving her bust a really nice shape, but it's not too low. It's it's. Mm -hmm. um, I it's a lovely, sophisticated look, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, and it's quite playful too, so yeah. I think you could and wear that so to go many, out in. I got so many comments when I wore it. Really? <laughs> it, was, it was really nice, actually. I wasn't used to it, so... Aww. That's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so what you were talking earlier about block color, block colouring. Yeah, yourself. well, I, I, as far as um, wearing block colours to make you look slimmer, um, if you, again, got broader shoulders on top or you've got a big bust, if you wear darker colours on top and lighter colours on the bottom, mm -hmm. then automatically that's going to balance out your, your top and your bottom half. Right. And equally, um, if you want to make your bottom half look slimmer, then you would wear dark on the bottom and then you would um, lighten the, the top. I think we need another show for this. We've run out of time again. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so Jules, thank you so You're much. You're very welcome. Tilly, we're going to borrow you a bit more today because yes. <laughs> we're going to do some makeup on you because Veronica's going to be joining us after the break with some great makeup tips too. Thank you so much and we'll see you after this. Welcome back to the show. And now we're going to speak all about makeup and we have Veronica Bailey with us. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. So we've borrowed the gorgeous Tilly again. It's <laughs> time yes. for some makeup. So you're going to be telling us about contouring and, and, and face, face shapes, shapes and stuff. Yeah. Okay, then. So Tilly has a heart-shaped face. So what we would be doing then is trying, again, it's about balance, like mm -hmm. with the body. Um, and always kind of aiming for an oval. So we start with the top and the bottom of your chin and okay. then anything else kind of outside of that. And because Tilly's face goes in a little bit more here, what we'd want to do is shade out the higher part. So we'd go along the hairline to balance that out. Now is that a darker um, it is, shade you're yeah, using? Okay. Yeah. 
Um, there are various brands available that do amazing products. I love MAC personally because you can buy your own palette and put everything okay. in it. And it has matte ones. But um, Illamasqua do great ones and they do mm -hmm. like cream ones, depending on what kind of skin you have, whether okay. you like using creams or powders. Um, and then to find out, so all you would basically do is then look in the mirror to see the top and the bottom of your face and then keep okay. everything round. Her face is so perfect anyway, I don't <laughs> know what I can do with it. The other thing you would do when you're contouring is to look for your cheek and that's from the top of your ear. You just roll a brush up and you okay. see where your bone is there. So all we would be doing as well is filling in a fine line. And this is not the same as blusher. This is just actually going to be shaping the face. Okay. So that brings that in and gives an illusion of the cheek. Now, we have the dark to bring that, put that in. And what we would do is use a highlighter mm -hmm. to, again, um, over the top of that, the high part of the cheek, to balance that out. Now, do you so do this you after your blusher or before? Well, no, the blusher goes somewhere else entirely. Oh, does it? Oh, God, that wrong your face <laughs> this way, what you would do is contouring goes, like, think of a C. So okay. the contouring goes along here and along oh. here. The blusher is the smaller part there, and then the highlighter is the even smaller C here. Okay, all right. Yeah? And I, I just love get it and slap it all because over. Because Tilly's so young as well, I'm, I can use a shimmery. Um, highlighter on her and this will come out lovely in the lights as you'll see and just only okay. really need a tiny amount and that just accentuates and we do under the brow bone as well accentuates the cheekbone as you can see okay yeah put some on the other side too you'll have to watch this back till you later to learn how to do all this yeah. stuff <laughs> you can't see at the moment <laughs> Yeah, so there's so many different tricks. And then obviously, too, if you wanted to slim down your nose, you would just use... Yes, how'd you do that, please? I'd like to know that. <laughs> yeah, you would take the light matte colour, though, mm -hmm. and slim that down, just a very fine line down the centre of your nose. And then to use a darker one, go along the edges of your okay. nose on either side. Now, it's important not to use a bronzer for this because it can be too orangey. All so right. it's important to use an actual contouring palette. Okay. Also, if you had a thin top lip, you would just pop a bit of the highlighter part at the cupid's bow. So that makes your, your top lip look bigger, yeah. really, yeah. just by doing that? Mm -hmm. You can oh. even use it in the center of your actual lip if you're not using lip gloss. If you just want to put it in your lipstick, put lip gloss over the top. And anything lighter obviously brings forward and okay. darker uh, recedes. So that's how we, yeah, so that will so bring... So if you've got big lips and you want to make them smaller, you'd lose I don't know like anyone that really wants to do that, <laughs> though. <laughs> that's yes. true, isn't it? <laughs> so a darker color on the lip would make them seem smaller. Okay. That's another thing that Tilly is asking me about before, because this is pretty much her full makeup look. She doesn't wear anything heavier than this. She doesn't need it, does she? She feels <laughs> uncomfortable. No, she doesn't, but she feels yeah. uncomfortable maybe wearing, um, to, wearing red lipstick, like she wouldn't, for example, do that. And I was saying, you need to just accentuate one or the other, do your eyes or do your lips, not both because then it can feel like overload and then you okay. looks too made up. Right. Okay, so we would just accentuate one. But I think with Tilly, she would just be happy to have her eyes the way they are with a little bit of gloss because she, mm -hmm. she's such a pretty she girl looks, anyway. Great. So there's not much I can do with her to make her look better. But yeah. Now, so. if, if someone has maybe like a square kind of face, what mm -hmm. would you do with that? Again, you're working with the oval. So anything that's outside of that would be the jawline here mm -hmm. and then the top. So you would put the, the darker color along the hairline and then along here. And always right. just make sure that you blend that into the bottom as well, into okay. your jaw. So that's what I would do. My face is quite square. Mm -hmm. And so I would have that color all the way along underneath here. And that also can hide a double chin as well. Okay. Now tell us as well, yes. I'd like to know how to cover dark circles. Okay, well there's a load of different kinds of things you can do to cover that. Um, it depends on your age, I find as well. I use a palette like this, which is a cream. Mm -hmm. um, but it depends if you have lines around under your eyes, which I do. I find that they tend to sit in the lines. Oh. And I don't like to wear a powder. So mm -hmm. there are um, various brands of makeup that I really in, that I like using underneath there. And one of them is Double Wear from Estee Lauder, and it is so it's not even a concealer; it's a foundation. And that mm -hmm. in itself, you can layer on twice. I use that instead of a cream like this. But for uh, young girls, it's uh, any kind of palette like this. And the dark circle um, is easily 
rectified with by just using the opposite. So you would put something like pink underneath, whereas if your face was red, we were talking about that earlier too. Yeah, if you get you know a lot what, of Because I hear that like right, you've got red pigment. Yeah, if you look on a color wheel, that? you would use the opposite color to that. So if your face is goes red, then you would use a green. Goes red. Yeah, like mm. if you get rosacea or you blush or uh -huh. you just turn to tend to do go my daughter does, she goes red and she's it's so embarrassing, my face is always red, you know. <laughs> so you can use a green primer. Okay. Again, Smashbox, they do a very they have like one in each colour. They have a pink one, an apricot one, a green one. So you put that on before you use your foundation. Okay. So then you can wear a very sheer foundation too, you don't need to really cover up. Okay. And if you don't if you don't blush or anything, what would you what colour would you have to use? Oh, uh, well, it de depends, doesn't it? I would always kind of say a peachy, pinky kind of colour. Okay. Never too plummy, never too dark. And always kind mm. of start with a little bit and build it up. Because you, if you put too much on, it's, mm. you know, it's harder to take it off. Okay. Tilly, did you have any questions for Veronica? Um, no, I just always think my face is so round, so the con contouring is really interesting. Okay. And also, I do feel like I go red a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really get the interesting green stuff out. <laughs> show you a bit more okay. of that too yeah so yeah so you're gonna okay what about what about for like the older older sort of ladies now that have sort of wrinkles and stuff what would you recommend for that well skincare is obviously really important <laughs> and using the right products from a young age I think as well but obviously cleansing and toning and moisturizing as we always say every yeah. time it's really really important and it's important just to establish a good routine even if it is just you know very basic a lot of people are happy just using an old-fashioned kind of cold cream to take off their makeup you know and as long as you're doing that every day and taking your makeup off before you go to bed at night then you know obviously that's really important to have your skin clean yeah. all the I have, time. I have been doing that I have to say. Good. <laughs> Any questions Jules that you have to take advantage of? Well, well I find it really fascinating because obviously being you know interested in body shapes understanding the face shapes as yeah. well but if you put the two together you know you've, you've cracked it. Really, got a winning formula haven't we really? Yeah. <laughs> so it's really interesting yeah. Okay so have you enjoyed it Tilly? Yeah thank you so much. <laughs> oh that was lovely. Thank you so much. That was lovely and thank you to all my lovely guess this evening it's been a great one I can't remember which my cameras I think it's that one isn't it yep it's that one okay so we have reached the end of the program today but if you want more information about our guests do visit the website chriscbshow.tv and also if you'd like to get in touch at any point to ask questions or even to maybe you have questions about body shape or or makeup you can also email me on chris at chriscbshow.tv and we'll make sure we get your questions answered and also if you have a suggestion for a show that you'd like us to do here as well you're welcome to it's your program too do write in to us, chris at chrissybshow.tv. So do have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we'll see you again on Monday. Bye-bye for now. You get the results that you're looking for. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's really intense. What's good? Oh, look at Barbara. She's <laughs> 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 <laughs>